Back at South by Southwest, we have Samantha. Hey, I'm Alex. I play bass and sing some vocals. Uh, Mike, guitar and vocals. And I'm Gabe, and I play the drums. So, originally from Chicago, now in Brooklyn, how did you make that move? Um, you know, we love Chicago. Me and Mike are both from Chicago. We love Chicago. We thought uh, New York was a place to maybe do a little bit more. The pace of things is a little bit faster. Um, and so we figured we'd give it a shot. So far, so good. I mean, there's a lot going on there. Um, did you know some people in New York, or how did the move take place? Um, well, I moved because we had decided as a band we were going to move. Um, Mike probably, you probably knew some people here yeah, more so than um, I did. I mean, we, we'd, we'd played New York before. Um, I had some friends that had relocated from Chicago to New York, um, as well as some a large portion of people from Alaska that, that we knew through our former bass player that moved to New York, Alex being one of them. Um, so we, I, I knew a few people out here. It wasn't like we didn't know anybody. Um, but it was, yeah, it was kind of like starting over a bit when we moved to Brooklyn. Uh, but yeah, like Gabe said, so far so good. It's a, it's much like Chicago. Moves a little faster, a little more going on. Yeah. It was a good move at the time. You know, a lot of bands say, well, we either got to go to L.A. or New York. You know, it's it's one or the other. The power centers. You know, did you ever consider California? Were you closer to New York, or how'd you make that decision? Yeah, I thought about California. Uh, I got an uncle in San Diego, so I spent some time there. I spent some time in L.A. Uh, I just want to go to New York because it's totally different than anything I've ever known coming from Alaska. You know, it's been great. Well, they, they, they say a lot of the clubs are moving to Brooklyn, you know, the Barclays Center. You, you got a lot of new energy going on in, in Brooklyn. What, what's that like to see that happen? Um, it's interesting because, you know, you think back to, like, the 80s and the 90s, early 2000s, a lot of the scene is still in the Lower East Side, 70s and on. Um, and over the last 15, 20 years, I mean, long before we were there, um, you, get, you get a lot of that shifted. The scene's definitely hit in Brooklyn now. Uh, and you sort of see it moving, like, it used to be in Williamsburg and Greenpoint, and now it's moving further to Bush. So it's just like with anything in New York, the neighborhood shifts so quickly. Um, a lot of the subcultures and the music scene uh, sort of follow suit. So it's, it's interesting to watch like some venues that have been around for long periods of time either not quite do the same thing they were doing or shut down and open up in a different location. There's a lot of, a lot of moving pieces in New York City. Yeah. You know, Manhattan seems like old money and, you know, it's very kind of corporate. I guess it's driven some of the clubs maybe out of there. What, what's the difference? Is Brooklyn more kind of creative a little more individual uh yeah i mean right now in the lower east side it's kind of doesn't have the same life the same energy um, i mean if you're going to close cbgb's and put up a clothing store that says a lot right there. Uh, yeah. i mean <laughs> yeah when you go to brooklyn i mean you know it's it's culture it's youth it's life it's all it's all there so um yeah i mean I mean, more to, to, to be fair, there's still remnants of that Lower East Side culture there. When we play Manhattan, we play the Lower East Side. Um, but it's hands down, and just there's a lot more going on in uh, parts of yeah, Brooklyn. It's a changing now. tide. It is. And who knows where it'll be? Like, you know, in five years, maybe it'll be Queens. Yeah. Well, obviously, you know, the whole goal is to get out of Brooklyn and take this music to the, to the states and the world. Is this your first time at Sound Fire? How many times have you come here? It's my first time. Uh, I think it's their third time. Okay. Um, so what, what did they tell you to prepare for this? To walk. Walk a lot. Carrying our gear. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. They're all right. But yeah. I'm back sore. Right. It's not exactly a subway over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, it's uh, we stay pretty close, but it's still a long walk when you're covered with... Uh, he's got like the Ninja Turtle symbol thing on his back. Okay. I don't yeah. know if you weigh on your stuff, but... It, it, it seems lugging gear is ne never easy in Austin because trying to get close to the venue is never easy and there's 500 other bands playing. Yeah. How do you deal with that? I, I would say the biggest issue because again we're used to lugging gear you know back in Chicago in New York and whenever we play anywhere. The difference with South By, it's different than touring, it's different than playing locally. The problem is just getting through the sea of people. So you're you're playing a show, you walk out with your gear, and then you have to navigate through the crowds to get to your next show. So that that's really the carrying isn't isn't new to us. It's the yeah. it's the, the difference of you know meandering through the crowds. Yeah the later it gets in the day the more crazier Sixth Street gets. You don't want to be lugging gear at nighttime on 6th Street. Yeah, sometimes you have to. I mean, yeah. we did last yeah. night. And we're going to do it and at, at, at the busiest time, you yeah. know. We're going to do it again, again tonight, and again on Saturday. So, yeah. it's got to deal with it. So, it's just kind of like 
perseverance. It's like you got to get to A and to B, so it's part of the gig. Uh, yeah, you got to get. I, well, you, you try to get off of Sixth Street when you're carrying all your gear. You gotta go down an alley or you know get get through a different street. But uh, yeah, it's just part of it. It's part of the experience. It's part of the. It actually is part of the fun. Believe it or not, when you look back and you're like, man, that was a pain in the butt, and you're like, but it was really fun, you know. So, yeah. Uh, I, I've, 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 that's the phrase I've been using when I was, I was like, it's a clusterfuck. <laughs> that's the best way to sum it up. Don't deny it. No, now tell us about the music. What's the latest music and what, what, what are you most proud of achieving with that? Uh, the, the new record's called Hourglass Noise. It comes out April 21st. We're doing the record release in Brooklyn on the 24th of April. Uh, it's a trash pop, you know, kind of post-punk. Uh, just noisy, three-piece, a lot of sound, a lot of noise. Um, I think all of them, you know, it's a 13-song full-length album. Uh, I think we've grown as a band from our first record and the EPs that have followed. Uh, yeah, just fleshed out. A lot of sound, a lot of noise. Uh, it's, it's catchy, but it's also aggressive and noisy. Uh, the new single, Fight, right now is what we're excited about because it's been getting some attention. Uh, which we're happy about, and the singles to follow and the record release. I think it's all the whole record's pretty indicative of who we are as a band. It's great. And where where else have the travels taken you? Uh, so far, really just Brooklyn since I've been in the band. Um, like Jersey, and, you know. Jersey. But we're gonna plan on hitting, uh, going up and down the East Coast in the next couple months, and then maybe this summer Midwest tour. Yeah. I don't know. Mike's working out. He does that yeah, stuff. I'm, okay. I'm finalizing all the dates. We're, we're, we got the rest of the South by and the record release in New York, a couple more New York shows, and then a few pop up and down on the East Coast, and then we're looking at like July-ish for, for the Midwest. Okay, great. Yeah. We'd love to see you out in California. Yeah. What, what is the, the biggest challenge in, in touring? We know the endurance. It's like 23 hours of travel and setup and waiting and trying to sleep and eat. Yeah, well, we actually haven't done too much touring in this band, but I mean, the biggest, I mean, I'd say the biggest challenge would be, one, getting along with each other, and two, just the distance. I mean, you know, if you're in... Not a lot of privacy. Yeah, if you're in if you're in the Midwest, I mean, you're going to be stuck in a van all day, going from, you know, St. Louis to Chicago, and, you know, six hours or however long it is. Um, yeah, 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 that's yeah. a good point. In my experience with touring, the hardest... Playing shows is awesome, hanging out with your friends is awesome. The hard part is booking the tour effectively so that you don't spend you know, two days driving from Detroit to Kansas City to go back to Chicago to go down to St. Louis. You, you try and, you know, route it. Yeah, you try to route it properly. Sometimes that works out in your favor. Sometimes there's a great lake in the way and you can't get around it, so, you know. Sure, yeah. sure. So, obviously, you got to be a road warrior these days because, you know, diminishing record sales, all, all of that that we deal with. What advice do you give to young bands coming up today? Because a lot of them are very naive. They think people are throwing around record deals and there's a lot of money and, and it's a big party. What do you got to clue them in on? Um, I would say, I mean, we're, we're still you know, sort of self-managed and, you know, things uh, you kind of in that capacity. And that's not from lack. I mean, I've been in a handful of bands been offered deals, but you don't really want to let go of too much of that control, nor nor bite off more than you can chew. If you're not, if you're not, and we, we know some bands too that have got some like great deals, and it screws them in the end. Yeah. Stay stay within your own means. Do what you can do um, until until you're to a point where where they need you, and if they need you, and you can make some money off of it, great. Otherwise, you're just you're just a commodity. So just make, make sure you're doing what you love doing, and. You know, it's never really going to be about the money anyway. The, the landscape of the music industry has changed so much since I started playing music. Um, it's not about making money off of CDs, it's about getting your music out there. So just love what you do and don't, don't like, you know, gravitate towards dollar signs that aren't actually going to happen. Well, you're in control of your own destiny by being self-sufficient. Right. Once you turn it over to somebody else, you could be put on a shelf. And we always say, you know, being independent, only you can say when it's over as opposed to signing with a label and you, and you get a text and said, hey guys, we're not putting a record out or we're, or you're done, you know? Right, right, yeah. So, yeah, that's that's well put, well put. Yeah. How about you, what advice do you have? Um, I mean, it's sort of similar. If you're if you're playing music because you want to make money, then you're that's the wrong thing to do. You know, go be a freaking doctor or lawyer or something. You play be music because you, yeah, be a, yeah, a plumber. Uh, you play music because you like doing it, because you love it, because it's fun, and, and it's fun to play instruments and create. And it's, a, it's an adventure being able to travel and meet new people and go to faraway lands and hopefully inspire 
other musicians and other people. Yeah, and, and be inspired by other musicians yeah. and, and other people. Cool. How about you? What do you tell uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much the same thing. If you don't love what you're doing, you know, there's no reason to it. When I was younger, you know, I was fixated on, like, you know, big deals and, like, big, big rock and big bands. And you get older and you realize it just, none of that really matters. If you, if you love what you're doing, just do it. And if that works out, awesome. And if not, love what you do. Um, and that's, that's about it. And that's the only thing. Like, like, never to say, I mean, if we became rock stars, like, we're not those, it's not like, oh, we don't want to be this huge. If that happens, awesome. My, I always say with this band, I want to take it as far as it goes, but the core of it needs to be, remain the same. You need to love what you're doing and create what you want to create and take that as far as, as it can go. And whatever scale that's on, I mean, you're already living your dream if you're making the shit you want to be making. So, you know, I'm not going to turn down a, an awesome record deal, but at the same time, that's kind of not why we do it in the first place. Thanks so much for coming out, guys. Really appreciate it. Wish you best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Figured get it quick.